Hey everyone, Dan from fbgeeks.com here, and I've got to say right away that you need to watch this video all the way through because this review does not end the way they normally do. Trust me, just watch the whole thing. Okay, now that that's out of the way, today I'm going to be reviewing the Visconti Opera Blue Typhoon with the new Chromium 18 Smart Touch Tubular Nib and Mosquito Filling Adapter. Man, that's a mouthful. They're pretty interesting features, and I do take a very close look at each of them later in the video. The pen comes in two versions, the Blue Typhoon, which is the subject of this review, and the Crystal that's mostly transparent except for the section. The Blue Typhoon retails for $6.95, while the Crystal is a bit more at $7.50, and both pens are limited to only a thousand pieces. Most retailers are selling these pens at retail, but for the best prices, visit Chatterley Luxuries, which is where I got mine. They have the best prices and customer service than anyone out there, so let's take a closer look at this guy. I really like Visconti's packaging. It helps establish a feeling of a quality and luxury writing instrument that sets the tone for the rest of the experience with the pen. The clamshell style case is covered in a brown leather-like material with a tray on the side that slides out. It holds the warranty and instruction booklet where, in the back, you'll find the pen's identity card that lists all the pertinent details. Then, of course, there's the pen, and nestled neatly next to it is the mosquito filling adapter. The opera's shape is unique and part of what Visconti calls their squaring the circle collection. As an aside here, I don't know how many of you remember the Microsoft's MP3 player called the Zune, but it had a control pad with a similar shape that was dubbed the Squircle. I always thought that name was kind of funny, and every time I see an opera, I think of Squircle. But it's not actually a perfect super ellipse. You can see a hard edge at the transition from the flat sides to the rounded edges. The trim is all platinum plated, and the Blue Typhoon is comprised of a dark blue resin with swirls of lighter blue throughout. It's a very pretty design, but there's zero depth to the material. After seeing this material in person, I kind of wish I had gone for the crystal. The biggest reason I didn't was because of its metal section. I really liked how the section of the Blue Typhoon matches the rest of the pen. On the front of the cat band is engraved Opera Typhoon, while on the back you'll find the pen's limited edition number out of 1000. Like almost every other Visconti out there, love it or hate it, you've got that billboard clip. I actually like the look of the clip, and while it has good tension, it's terrible at actually holding the pen in place. When I wear a suit, I normally clip the pen in the inside jacket pocket. On one occasion, I had my Davina with me, and I had taken off my jacket, and when I grabbed it, I threw it over my arm. I nearly had a heart attack because the pen fell out and hit the floor. I really, I about died. I mean, just put a little hook or a nub or something on there to stop that, please. Anyway. Finishing off the top of the cap is Visconti's removable magnetic V medallion that can be replaced with a number of other designs and we can get a good look at the pen's squared circle profile here. One feature I really like on Visconti's pens is their bayonet cap system. A quarter turn is all it takes to lock or unlock the cap and I've never not had it work perfectly. The section features a comfortable profile and flares out right before the nib. At the opposite end is an ink window that's a very welcome feature on this opaque pen. The Chromium 18 nib is disappointing. Visconti hasn't said exactly what Chromium 18 is, but I'm almost certain it's just 1810 stainless steel, which means it's a steel alloy with 18% chromium and 10% nickel. This is actually a very common alloy used in kitchen flatware. It provides a bright, shiny finish with strong resistance to corrosion. The Chromium 18 moniker is really just a marketing term. Then there's the laser engraving all around the nib that just looks absolutely horrid. The shape of the tubular nib is actually kind of cool. I like it. It's very reminiscent of the Schaefer Triumph nib, which was actually the inspiration for Visconti's nib. The difference was that Schaefer executed it very well. It was made from 14 karat gold, came in flexible varieties, and had two-tone plating. Visconti's nib doesn't have any of those things. It's stiff as a nail and only comes in four sizes, fine, medium, broad, and 1.3 stub. 
If you're still watching this review, then you might be interested in knowing how large the opera is. From left to right, we have the Mont Blanc 149, the Visconti Homo Sapiens, the Opera, the Visconti Wall Street Limited Edition, the Pelican M805, and the Pelican M200. Uncapped, you can see that the Opera is a very long pen, and since the tubular nib doesn't have the flared shoulders of a traditional nib, its visual presence is reduced. Posted, this pen is a little ridiculous. I can't imagine many people would actually use it in this position. If you have large hands, you'll find the pen's length and girth fill your hand nicely, but it may actually be too big for some users. If you post every pen, or just want to stand out in a crowd, you can post the cap. It attaches very securely, as you can see, but it just makes the pen too long and awkward because of the cap's weight. The Opera utilizes Visconti's double reservoir power filler. It's an easy filling system to operate with the added benefit of being flying friendly. With the filling knob screwed down, the large ink reservoir in the barrel is sealed off from the feed, meaning changes in pressure won't cause a mess inside the cap. The Mosquito filling adapter is pretty easy to use as well. There's actually instructions on the adapter so you don't screw it up. All you have to do is align the design on the nib with the design on the adapter and shove it on. It fits very tightly and will require some effort to get it on. But once you do, you'll have this instrument that can tap into the nearest vein for an unlimited supply of the most realistic blood colored ink ever. Or at least that's what it looks like. The big benefit to using the filling adapter is that it keeps ink off the section. This is nice because if you use the trick to getting a full fill with a plunger filler, you'll be inserting the pen into the ink multiple times. If you're not aware of this trick, check out the video description for a link. The other benefit is that you can get every last drop out of an ink bottle. Or if you're a J or Band user, it means you'll be able to fill the pen more than once without having to decant their ink into a more usable bottle. So what's this pen like to write with? I have no idea. I couldn't get the thing to write. At all. This was the first time I had filled the pen and attempted to use it, and it wouldn't write for the life of me. I took it upstairs to inspect it and couldn't find any reason it shouldn't be writing. Then I discovered the deal breaker. Watch what happens when I open and close the filling knob. Specifically, pay attention to the tip of the nib. Did you see that? Did you see that drop of ink fall from the nib? You can see this one's just hanging there. I'm gonna go ahead and help it along and then crack open the filling knob again. This will let ink from the main reservoir in the barrel access the small reservoir in the section. Now I'm gonna close it again and look what happens. The ink drips out of the feed so much and so quickly that you can see the level drop in the ink window. At this point, I was just done. I called Bryant at Chatterley Luxuries and told him what was going on and he laid out my options. I could have a full refund, I could exchange it for something else, or I could exchange it for another opera. Since I was kind of put off from this pen anyways, I didn't really want to wait for it to go to Italy to be repaired and come back. But Bryant explained to me that wouldn't be the case. If I wanted another opera, then Coles of London, the US distributor, they just sent me another one right away, which is basically the ideal customer service action. But you rarely see that happen, so I was surprised when Bryant mentioned that's how they'd handle that option. But I decided to just go for a refund because I knew this was coming. The Homo Sapiens Crystal. And I really, really wanted it. And Bryant made it happen. He took care of me. It was an unfortunate situation, and it should have never happened. But I'm glad it happened with Brian because he handled it exactly as a customer would want it handled. There was no headache or frustration in dealing with the return or the exchange or the refund. He just said, tell me what you want to do. What's going to make you happy? And that's why I'll continue to go to Brian because I know I'm going to be taken care of. So I'm sorry I couldn't tell you how the nib performed or how it felt, but hopefully you got a close enough look at the rest of the pen to figure out if you want to pursue it. Outside of the leaking issue, I just wasn't that impressed with the pen, and I'm much happier with the Homo Sapiens Crystal. I will be doing a review of this pen, so keep an eye out for that in the meantime. Check out 
chatterlyluxuries.com for the best prices and customer service you'll find anywhere. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like this video if uh, you found it helpful. And definitely subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Indulge in the madness.